And then our final point. Yeah. Very, very final point here is what happens when you are moving or leaving or, you know, voluntarily want to leave the CISO program? Yeah, so, so first of all, you know, let, let me talk a few things about this, right? So uh, there, there are many reasons why you may be leaving the program. You may be on a volunteer base or, or you may be, you know, kick off the program <laughs> depending upon. Yep. So let's talk about, you know, you leaving, you know, um, you know, you want to at least give your case manager a one month notice that you are no longer wanting to be on the CISO program. Um, you know, uh, you know if, if, if your family member uh, is on the CISO program and they die, um, then, you know, you're wanting to provide the case manager that information immediately. Yep. Um, right. Um, if you're moving outside of the health authority, uh, the health authorities always want to know, you know, well in advance, a few months in advance. Right. Uh, under Fraser Health, they like to know three months in advance. Um, you know, having said that, you know, uh, if you're if you're moving from one health authority to another health authority, um, you, you can actually get the funding from the same health authority up to two months. Oh, it's like so a transition move, of sorts? Right. So for me, I moved from Vancouver to New Westminster. Yep. Uh, Vancouver, Vancouver Coastal. Yep. Continued to pay my uh, supports for two months while I was in that transition period. Uh, right. Uh, that's course. something that the Association of CECL Employers really negotiated hard for to try mm -hmm. and get that into the agreement. So then you're not like, you know, fighting for your supports to stay in place. Uh, at the same time of moving, yes. you would actually get to move first right. and now start working on negotiating your supports. Yeah. When they were talking about moving, I was thinking, you know, bigger moves, but within Vancouver, if you move from one city to another, it changes from the health authority because you have Vancouver Coastal Health, Fraser Health. So, yeah, I hadn't yeah. even thought about that. Yeah. So, um, you know, why, why would you get kicked off the program? You know, uh, the kinds of things, the reason why you would be... Yeah. Uh, or kicked off, be terminated from the program, whatever words you want to say. Yeah. You know, misuse of funding. Yes. Would be a big one. Um, you know, uh, you know that the contractual agreement between you and the health authority wasn't followed. Uh, there was a failure to submit your financial statements. Right. Would be another reason. Yeah. Um, safety risks, if there was some real safety concerns. Uh, failure to comply to the employment standards and all of the other, yes. you know, agencies that we had spoken about, um, you know, uh, you know, also perhaps, um, uh, you know, if, if you didn't uh, submit your regular monthly contribution that you're supposed to oh, every yes. month, yeah, you yeah, know, the uh, per diem yes. amount, yep. um, you know, uh, a lot, you know, and then if you go into a deficit and don't try to resolve it. Right, you know, uh, each health authority might have a different level of mm -hmm. uh, uh, patients around that, right? So, uh, you know, if your health yep. changed and you went into a negative, you were using your supports. Always talk to your health authority quickly, right? As soon as possible, they yep. they may be able to provide you some additional hours and stuff over a period of time. Uh, but just to say that the, the process of closing, moving from one health authority to other. You know, very much. You, you pay out all your employees. Oh. Um, you have to go through all that process oh. to uh, shut down one CISL account and, open, and up. open up a whole new one. And wow. I need to let you know that's a whole like starting again. Yeah, that is the reality. It's yes. not a matter of just uh, moving to the other place and now right. the new guys start submitting. Right. You have to return any surplus that you have. As well, so if you have got you know a couple thousand dollars in surplus, you have to return it to that health authority. So you really do start from scratch again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to fill out the forms again, the contracts, all that kind of stuff. Um, so you don't have to apply all over again. That's you do have to apply all over again. Yes. Oh, you do. Yeah. Oh, um, I and, and so okay. uh, because you're and and you really are relooking. The, the, you know, the, you would hope that during the transition period. That the one health authority will give the information to the other yeah. ones. That does happen, uh, but if you're getting a large number of hours from one health authority, unfortunately, the other health authority quite often scrutinizes that pretty significantly. So you do need to be prepared wow, okay. to, with your support plans yes. 
and be ready to discuss and negotiate your hours once again. Right. Uh, I would like to say that that wasn't going to happen, yes. uh, but unfortunately it happens nearly every time. So, yeah, we are, so we let, are let's be true. honest with it. Um, yeah. It's part of the system that we still need to fix. Um, because, yeah, you know, even though one health authority will give you that 10 hours, for example, um, uh, and, and that somebody else is coming in mm -hmm. from another health authority with the 10 hours to that one that gave 10 hours before, they may not give you that 10 hours. So uh, without a bit of a negotiation. So 